Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I want you to pay attention to what you'll be learning tonight. Like we did last week. I will teach and then we'll pray. But like I saw in my vision, I want you to be sensitive from the start of this teaching, even up until we share the grace. God is doing something. And whilst the word is coming, God is going to be visiting you uniquely and individually. Make sure your heart is open. For some of you, while the word is coming, healing will come with it. For some of you, while the word is coming, lifting will come with it. For some of you, while the word is coming, restoration. You will be accessing the grace that will reverse things. Things that should be in your life and are not. That God is going to be backdating things and establishing them in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Please be seated and let's begin our teaching. Mighty God. My teaching tonight is from Zephaniah chapter 3. Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 17. Zephaniah 3 and verse 17. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. He says, the Lord thy God, not just the one who is in heaven, the one who is in the midst of thee, is mighty. We'll be looking very briefly at the principles from this topic. That really is the topic as long as it is. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. I'm teaching us tonight on how to access the manifested presence of God. Um, when it has to do with understanding the dynamics of the presence of God, or Lami Day, the anointing is coming on that individual. Or Lami Day, I heard that name, and the Lord is saying, You are entering a new season of the anointing. A new season of power and a new season of grace in the name of Jesus a new season of power and a new season of grace it will not be like before God is saying I'm doing something new this will be by his spirit you cannot be effective in today's world if you do not understand the mysteries that secure the manifest presence of God in the life of an individual. Please listen very carefully. Behind the enviable exploits of the saints, behind the individuals, men and women who are doing mighty things for the kingdom world over is this mystery of the divine manifested presence of God. They have found a way of securing the manifest presence of God upon their lives, upon their ministries, upon their families, upon their visions. Psalm 23, please. What happens to a man when God is with you? What happens to a man if and when you can secure the presence of God. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Verse 2. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. It says, He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. 
Not for the evil has departed. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. It says, thou preparest a table for me before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over. Then it says, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell. It didn't say, and I will dwell in heaven. More than that. It didn't say, and I will dwell in my home. It says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord. The house of a man is where he stays. I will dwell, not just visit. I will make it my habitation. I have found out that provided you are with me, there are certain possibilities that begin to manifest in and through my life. Mark chapter 4, please, from verse 35. Shabbos Kuzabri and Dakata. Mark 4 from verse 35. Media, we together, please. Let's walk very fast. Mark chapter 4 and verse 35. Let me pull it up here so that we can save time. Mark chapter 4. It says, and the same day, when the even was come, he saith unto them, let us pass over unto the other side, Jesus now. And when he had sent the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. The Bible says, and there arose a great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. The Bible says, and he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. Hmm. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was great calm. 40. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? Verse 41. And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, What manner of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? The Bible says that the, the wind, the weather was not favorable. The wind was boisterous. And then it tells us that Jesus was at the other side of the boat asleep. And when he got up, he rebuked them for their unbelief. He said, why are you afraid? In other words, are you not conscious that my presence has an implication? Why do you act as though my presence does not mean anything? Have you not learned what happens when I am there? Now that I am with you in the boat, even though asleep, it is still me. I expected you to find confidence, knowing that more than the wind, that I was with you in the boat. He says, for thou art with me. That means securing the presence of God is greater than praying for the exit of a negative situation. Listen very carefully. Securing the presence of God, even if it is in the midst of a negative situation, is wiser and more profitable than even praying that the situation should leave. Because if, it's, if a negative situation leaves you and you still have not secured divine presence, that is only a temporal solution. The devil will be able to find cheap access to your life. What is the presence of God? We talk a lot about the presence of God. You've heard preachers talk about the presence of God. Men and women of God who walk in great power and grace will tell you that behind the exploit is the reality of the manifest presence of God. In fact, let me start this way as a way of recap. I have taught you, according to scripture, that there are three dimensions of the presence of God. 
as revealed in scripture there are three dimensions let me just say that for the sake of those who will be hearing for the first time the first dimension of god's presence as revealed from scripture i call it his omni presence write it down please his omni presence psalm 139 from verse 7 to 12 psalm 139 from verse 7 to 12 the first dimension of his presence is called his omnipresence whither shall i go from thy spirit he says other versions will say presence and whither shall i flee from your presence next verse if i ascend into heaven thou art there if i make my bed in hell behold you are also there if i take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. We're reading to 12. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Last verse. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the light shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. What a God both darkness in other words when god shows up it does not matter whether it was darkness or light before it doesn't mean anything his presence will make the condition constant the moment he comes both darkness and light are alike to thee the omni presence of god his ability to be everywhere at the same time now please look up even though we were created in the image and the likeness of God there are three attributes of God he did not share with man it brands him and keeps him in a class all by himself he gave man everything including dominion his image but there are three attributes that God possesses that man does not have number one is called omnipresence man is not omnipresent we cannot be everywhere at the same time. Number two, omnipotent. Man is not all powerful. Our authority in this kingdom is derived, not generated. Derived from our relationship. You do not have an independent authority outside of your relationship with Jesus Christ. Omnipotent. Number three, omniscience. Or omniscience, as others who call it, it means man is not all-knowing. The Bible clearly says that we see in part and we prophesy in part. So if you ever seek to know the difference between God and man, as far as the excellency of his person is concerned, these three attributes brand God and keep him in a class all by himself. Man is not omnipresent. When Jesus became a man, he was not omnipresent. He could only be in one place at a time. Hallelujah. I hope you know that even spirits are not omnipresent. Just because they are spirits does not mean they are omnipresent. You read your Bible. There is no record of any spirit being omnipresent. You could have glimpses of reaching into the future like it happened with Elisha when gehazi was trying to negotiate the gift he said did my spirit not go with you but it did not mean that it was everywhere are we together man and every other spirit aside from god is location dependent you cannot be everywhere it is possible to be in multiple places at the same time but not everywhere are you understanding omnipresence now it is possible to be in more than a place I can be here right now and prophetically the Spirit of God can lead me to another sphere, another realm. That is a possibility, but not everywhere. And then omnipotence. I am not all powerful. Uh -uh. No man is all powerful. No spirit is all powerful except God. Once have I spoken. And twice have you heard that all power, not some, all power. Hallelujah. 
praise the name of the Lord. So it's important to establish that. Let's define God's presence. What is the presence of God? The presence of God. I'm teaching tonight on the manifest presence. The, the third dimension. Did I talk about the third dimension? Let me hurry up and tie it. I didn't talk about it. That there are three dimensions. Number one is his omnipresence. Just to tie that up. Number two, I call it his Emmanuel dimension. You can call it any name. But I call it his Emmanuel dimension according to Matthew 18 and verse 20. His Emmanuel dimension. The ability to be in a place where two or three are gathered in his name. He said. That everywhere two or three are gathered in my name. That dimension of his presence cannot be drawn by an individual. The condition is you have to be at least two or three people. And then he is in the midst of them. Where two or three are gathered, it has to be in his name. That means if there is a gathering somewhere, an occultic gathering or some kind of gathering, just because humans are there doesn't mean that presence is there. They have to be gathered in his name. He says, I am in the midst of them. The third dimension of his presence is called his manifest presence or his Shekinah. Exodus chapter 40 and verse 34. Please let's hurry up. Exodus chapter 40 and verse 34. The Bible says, The cloud covered the tent of congregation and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. We are reading to 38. Next verse. And Moses could not enter into the tent of congregation because the cloud abode thereon and the glory of God filled the tabernacle. Next verse. And when the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, the children of Israel went onward into all their journeys. But if the cloud were not taken up, they journeyed not till the day it was taken up. Final verse. For the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day, and fire was on it by night, in the sight of how many? So this was not just a vision for one or two people. Everybody saw it in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. The omnipresence of God everywhere at the same time. The dimension of him that is revealed where two or three are gathered in his name. And here we have his manifest presence. And according to scripture, you would notice that the first two dimensions do not have any physical effect. They may have a spiritual effect, but you do not see any physical effect. But when that third dimension, the Shekinah, or the manifest presence shows up, there is always an effect in the earth realm directly. Hallelujah. Now let's define the presence of God. What is the presence of God? Write this down. The presence of God is the influence of His person through His Spirit. The influence of His person through His Spirit, in and upon our lives. The presence of God represents the influence of His person. And that that influence is administered here and now through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The influence of His person through His Spirit in and upon our lives. This is what we call the presence of God. Every time we are talking about the presence of God in one word, we are talking about the influence of His Spirit. That's why I asked Dave to come and sing that song. The influence of the presence, the, the Spirit of God upon an individual, and even within that individual, is called the presence of God. And that we are saying, that an individual can literally carry that influence like a climate, my God. That you can carry that influence with you. And that it begins to provide certain possibilities. When you know how to host that dimension of influence, you become a sign and a wonder upon the earth. 
Believe me, ladies and gentlemen, when it has to do with this teaching, I know what I am saying. I don't claim to know everything. I am a student ever learning. But believe me when I tell you, if it has to do with the presence of God and the dynamics of intimacy and the manifested presence of God, there is something I know about it. The influence that the presence of God and that influence can overshadow an individual, not just to come and then to go, that an individual can literally be immersed. That's where you get the word baptism, baptizo, to be partially or totally immersed in that presence, such that they will not see you again. Listen, if I enter inside a swimming pool, the only way you can reach me is to be affected by that water. Is that true? If I am inside water, a swimming pool, you cannot access me until you directly access what is influencing me. An individual can be immersed. When you buy a product, usually that product is wrapped. Let me work with your imaginations. Is that true? So the product is wrapped and that which you need to consume the real product is somewhere and how many of you have seen very small products wrapped with mighty all kinds of layers of wrappings usually you can use the extent of the wrapping of a product to show its originality and its quality do you agree with me on that that sometimes you can buy, say, a wristwatch or a perfume or something and there is such elaborate wrapping. And you are wondering, why didn't they just put a leather? They may tell you that that thing was $10,000, $20,000 for a tiny thing, but they wrap it in a way that it will force you to see the value. Before you access that product, you will need to laboriously. And sometimes you have to use a scissors, use something to cut through the layers. I am saying the believer can become that valuable. That you are immersed in such a cloud of God's manifested presence. It is impossible to reach you ignoring the presence. Are you learning? The presence of God upon a man and in a man's life guarantees the following. Please write. There are four things according to scripture that come to your life. You are guaranteed to experience them if you go through this spiritual labor to secure the manifested presence of God in your life. Are you ready? Number one, the presence of God, that influence, if allowed to rest upon a man, and that you are immersed in that presence, it guarantees, number one, supernatural favor. Supernatural favor. Genesis 39 and verse 2. Hmm. Shaliz Kapranda Katabala Kuzia. Genesis 39 and verse 2. And the Lord was with Joseph. Is that in your Bible? And he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master. The Lord was with Joseph. He was a prosperous man. Even though he was in the house of an Egyptian. Go to verse 21. Same scripture. 21. The Bible says, but the Lord was with Joseph and he showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. What was the basis of his favor? Divine presence. That there was something about the presence of God upon Joseph. He was not the only prisoner. In fact, he was not the first prisoner. Before he arrived, there were other prisoners. But as soon as he showed up, he didn't just come with chains. He came with the presence. And the Bible says it brought prosperity and it brought favor to Joseph. Number two. Hmm. 
What is the implication of the manifest presence of God in and upon a man's life? Are you ready? Rest roundabout. Rest roundabout. Exodus chapter 33, please. From verse 13 and 14. Rest roundabout. It says, Now therefore, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in your sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. Next verse. And he said, My presence shall go with you, and I will give you Say rest. My presence shall go with you. And that is what secures your rest. There is no possibility. That means trouble will never end from the life of a man who ignores the presence of God. It will be one kind of trouble and tragedy connecting after another. Divine presence can secure rest. 2 Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 12. 2 Chronicles 15 and verse 12. We're reading to 15. The Bible says, And they entered into a covenant. Please look up everyone. Very powerful scripture. And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. Is that in your Bible? That whosoever should not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death. Whether small or great, whether man or woman, 14. And they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice and with shouting and with trumpets and with cornets, 15. The Bible says, and all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with all their desire, and he was found of them. As a result, the Lord gave them rest round about. I prophesy to someone in the name of Jesus. This is the season you will step into strange rest. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Age long battles. Age long disappointment. Age long captivity. It comes under arrest right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. Rest round about the manifest presence of God that when the Lord is in the midst of you and he is mighty he can be mighty to give you rest not just mighty to give you favor God can be mighty to give you rest round about are you learning number three when the Lord is mighty in the midst of you, finds expression as His manifest presence, what do you stand to enjoy? Three, supernatural protection and preservation. Oh, this is powerful. Supernatural protection and preservation. Please listen carefully, especially in light of the evil times that we live in. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Say, I buy a product that is very expensive. And the product is somewhere hidden in that package. Look up, please. If I throw that package up and it falls, does it hurt the product? Because the product is so secure. What suffers is what is wrapping it, not the product. Is that true? How many of you have carried a crate of eggs, not wrapped, not covered and you climb the bike or you climb something and only half of it arrived home because bombs kept breaking everything one by one now the egg is wonderful can serve you but it was not covered and protected those who do poultry business they have a way of wrapping that thing to a point that even if the car keeps turning it will arrive safely is that true the glory of god can become your shield and covering that whether it is by your left or right, you can be so immune and protected. Let me show you a few scriptures. Psalm 23 and verse 4. We read that earlier. Let's read it again. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. That means, anytime you see evil, forget about the evil and verify whether he is with you. If he's not with you, find him fast. Don't be distracted by the evil. You have no immunity against the effect of evil if you do not secure that he is with you. For thou art with me. Isaiah chapter 43 from verse 1 to 3. Isaiah 43, very powerful, instructive scripture. But now, Isaiah 43, 1 to 3. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, prophesy, say, I will not fear. One more time, say, I will not fear. Fear not, he says, for I have redeemed thee, and have called thee by name, thou art mine. Verse 2, it says, when thou passest through the water, I will be with thee. He didn't say I will take the water away. Just, just know that I am with you. And when you pass through the rivers, it shall not overflow you. When you walk through fire, thou shall not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon you. Verse 3. It says, for I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. I am with you. Daniel chapter 3, from verse 23. Daniel chapter 3. What the manifest presence of God, the Shekinah of God, that when the Lord is in the midst of you, He is also mighty to protect, mighty to defend, mighty to preserve. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Uh -huh. And Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished. Why? And rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? And they answered unto the king, True, O king. 25. And he answered, Lo, I see four men. Lo, I see four men walking in the midst of the fire and they have no heart and the form of the fourth is like the son of god next verse and nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said shadrach meshach abednego ye servants of the most high god come forth and come hither and they all came forth 27 and the princes, governors, captains, watch carefully, and the king's counselors being gathered together, saw this man upon whose bodies the fire had no power. That means the effect of fire is not generic. There are people who have seen, I told you that when you throw a product up, if it is properly wrapped, it is what wraps it that suffers. Nor was an hair of their head singed. Neither were their coats changed. Nor the smell of fire had passed on them. The fourth man who appeared in the fire. The chains all of a sudden were caught. And the people were moving in the midst of fire. As though it were not fire. Fire that had been made seven times hotter. That those who prepared it fell and the Bible says they died. Supernatural protection and preservation. Let's finish up the scripture. And Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, who had sent his angel and delivered his servant that trusted in him, and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies, that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. The effect, therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, language which speak anything amiss against the god of these three Hebrew boys shall be cut in pieces 
and their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Hold on. Do you know what this means? That there is a way God delivers that is like a signature. You will know he's the one. That, there are certain kinds of deliverances that you may suspect that maybe this is another kind of God. But that when God shows up, there is a way he can deliver. Nebuchadnezzar is not naive as to spiritual things. And here he's saying that there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. The way God will come through for you in this season will surprise everybody around you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I say it again. The way my God will come through for you. You expect him to come this way. He will come in a way that will sign his signature upon your life. That everyone will know that there is a God that sits in heaven. Please sit down. It is a risk to walk outside of the Shekinah, the presence of God. There is no guarantee for immunity. The Bible is clear to us from Psalm 91 that there are arrows that fly by day. You know the thing about the arrow? You don't know who shot it. You just know there was an arrow. If I shoot an arrow, I can be from my room. And yet shoot it there. If I use a sword, you will see the person holding the sword. But an arrow can go in, in battles you don't know where they come from. But the presence of God can immune you. Can I tell you, if you intend to rise, if you intend to grow, if you intend to manifest the influence of the kingdom, please understand divine presence. Otherwise you will fall down one day for no reason. And you probably might not be able to get up. Are we together? If you ever think everybody will clap for you because you are rising, think again. We live in a world that is immersed in wickedness. But in the name of Jesus, that presence will rest upon you and, and surround you and any arrow projected towards you. That, that the thick skin of that cloud will not only stop it, it can reverse it back. In the name of Jesus Christ. The psalmist said in Psalm 3, please give it to us. Psalm 3, verse 1. Lord, how they increased that trouble me. Many are they, he says, that rise up against me. Two, many are they which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. I love it. I'm not going to sing it. But I will recite it. It says, but thou, O Lord, art a... Hold on. It didn't say you brought a shield. You are the shield yourself. Did the Bible not tell you the name of the Lord is a strong tower? That you can enter and you are saved. From today, anyone who plots evil against you, whether by witchcraft or divination, whether you are asleep or awake, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, before you wake up, judgment would have happened already. Please sit down. Now, watch this in the New Testament, Jesus gave us a very powerful illustration that while men slept, it was time for sleep. The Bible says an enemy came. Certainly that enemy found access. There was no covering, no hindrance. Do you know that there is a name Satan is called? The thief. Question. How many thieves will come through your gate and knock responsibly and say, I came to steal? The thief is a master at violating order. A thief is not just one who steals. He's a master at violating order. A thief does not respect due process. He tells you there is an adversary who does not respect due process. And that cloud can cover you while you sleep. 
and someone is making enchantment and say, how can this person be the first to rise in this family? Let us conjure something that will bring him down. And while they try to project you, they think it's your face that will show up. Shabakatos Katibata. Krate Kaparentes Katabata. At that enchantment is fire that will answer right from that shrine. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can I tell you this? I want you to believe what I'm telling you. Hallelujah. There are many of you, listen to me, just when you want to rise and move and excel, here come these arrows that fly by day, the noisome pestilence that wastes in noonday. Every time you see people rise and cannot continue, something is popping them. Hallelujah. Can I tell you this? When the glory of God rests upon you, you not only find favor, you not only find rest round about, you can be sure of your protection. Listen, you can hold a gun to protect you. Your gun is only useful if your hands are not tied. Is that true? And you can shoot. And if you have the courage to shoot. Is that true? There are certain assaults of the devil that happen so fast. You will need to be immune before, not during. Hallelujah. You see, by reason of what I do, I'm not just glorifying Satan. Believe me, by reason of what I do, this is daily I interact with people who were not covered. You are my shield. You are my covering. You are my stability. And my foundation take me to the place. The place you are, the secret place, that's where I want to be. I like this part of the song. You are my shield, you are my covering, you are my stability, my foundation. You are my shield. You are my covering. You are my stability. My foundation. Hear me. When Jesus started rising and he was making news in the town, is it in your Bible that some people came and gathered? Their assignment was not for him to stop, their assignment was for him to die. If it happened to Jesus, who flattered you into believing that indefinitely you will keep rising, changing lives, affecting destinies, and then the gates of hell will fold their arms? Your church, your ministry, your voice, your business? No, Satan has not changed. It's, it's not only God who does not change, Satan too does not change. He is the same old. From the time he became Satan, he remains Satan. Don't you think your life will make him sympathize with you? You don't know the enemy you are dealing with. If Satan did not pity little children and there was a cry in Rama, you are an adult, why should he pity you? It takes the covering of that cloud. Because if he cannot get you, he will come to your children. If he, when he tried, he wanted to reach Jesus. He started with Peter, then Judas. And he killed two birds with one stone. Because both Judas and Jesus died. Unfortunately, Judas died without Jesus. So he couldn't come back. Can I tell you this? That covering is so powerful. There is space for everyone who cares to enter. That means you can't enter and leave your children. 
You can't enter and leave your husband or your wife. Even your business can enter. Even your ministry can enter. Even your school can enter. Don't watch attacks happen around your life and keep wondering. I want to know the name of all the demon spirits. It is not necessary. You just find that covering. Supernatural protection. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? The Lord is the strength of my life, he says. I shall not fear what man does to me. Listen. You can get up in the morning and go to the market. You know you are innocent. But how do you guarantee everybody there is innocent? You can step into a car and you are ready to drive. Just because the car is sound does not mean you are safe. I'm not scaring you. Are we together now? This was one of the things I sorted out with God early. Because I knew the things you'll be doing through my life. And I'm telling you, even this one does not work by default. I don't mean to scare you. You desire greatness, and when that anointing came upon you, Satan saw it too. Satan knows that instead of fighting every child in your school, of the 500 students in your school, he should fight you and bring you down. He has won. There are people who are equal nations. Why should Satan fight nations when he can fight them? It's cheaper to fight them. If there is any current attack over anyone's life here, under the sound of my voice, you have been seeing patterns around your life that you don't understand. Maybe in the life of your spouse. Those following, make sure you connect. I'm speaking now. I'm speaking from that glory. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, I command those attacks that they come to an end now. Hear me? Hear me, when it was time to end Zechariah's captivity, when Gabriel came and Zechariah was questioning him, he said, I am Gabriel that stands in the presence of God. In other words, will I be false and leave the presence of God and come to you? I am coming from the presence. Oh, let me speak from that presence, that in the name of Jesus again, anything that fights you goes down instantly. Help them, please. Anything that papaka poskata, it goes down instantly. Please sit down. Supernatural protection. There are all kinds of things happening. Kidnappings, demonic things, ritual activities that just want to waste people's lives. Can I tell you, you can only do your best to protect yourself physically. Let me tell you the truth. You can find rest. There are many people who are afraid now. They can't travel, they can't go out because they are not sure. Look how unsafe the world is, unfortunately, even our regions. The moment you are a person of influence, you don't even know what can happen. People have died because somebody shook them. The, the same kiss that is supposed to be a proof of love was a sign to an enemy. This is the one to kill. So someone can shake you. How are you? God bless you. Every business and every ministry that has gone under attack. Every man of God whose voice is being fought by Satan. Every anointing, whether in this city, in this nation, you are a man of God and the devil is fighting your voice, fighting your relevance, fighting your ministry. 
I come from that presence and I decree and declare that battle comes to an end now. Hear me? Every business here under strange attacks, you used to do well, but you don't know what suddenly happened. Sales have gone down, clients have gone down, inexplainable tragedies by the power that raised Christ from the dead. That devil gives way now. Every parent here, you don't seem to understand what is happening with your children again. Poor performance in school, wasting your school fees. They are intelligent people, but something happens to them. In the name of Jesus, I declare deliverance for you now. Please sit down. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Do you know, let me tell you this. When you understand the mystery of the presence of God, it is beyond the realm of anointing. No. You can be a carrier of the living presence of God. That when people come within the circumference of your person, this is not about falling down or standing up. Unconsciously, you can be in a place and when God wants to rescue a destiny, he will just make them pass close to you. Did the Bible not say the shadow of Peter? The Bible called it shadow. We know better. It's not the shadow. They came under the influence. Peter carried that presence. Take that presence to your office and watch what happens. Take that presence to your business. For as long as you think I'm just a homo sapien, I'm just an intellectual. No. You are a career of that presence. That you make up your mind that I will never shake anybody or greet anybody and the person goes back and nothing changes. No. Hear me. Someone comes to greet you and says, good afternoon, sir. He shook your hand and left. And he may not know what he carried. All he knows is that I shook his hand and goodness and mercy began to follow me. What is the mystery behind my day? Favor from morning, rest following me. And the Lord will remind them that you shook one who stands in the presence. Hallelujah. Please sit down. So number one, the Lord can be mighty in your midst to bring supernatural favor. Number two, rest roundabout. Number three, protection and super, supernatural protection and preservation. Are you ready for number four? The fourth blessing that comes upon any individual who pays that price to be a career of God's manifest presence is called honor and exemption. Honor and exemption. Please give us Isaiah 43 from verse 3 to 6. Let's read from Amplified. Isaiah 43 from verse 3 to 6. Someone's life is changing. Now watch this. I'd like us to read. Or I'll just read. You just follow. <laughs> For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. It says, I give Egypt to the Babylonians for your ransom. God is sharing men to bail you out. Look at this. Ethiopia and Seba for your release. Next verse. It says, because you are precious in my sight and honored and because I love you, what will I do? I will give men in return for you and people in exchange for your life. This is your Bible. That when you can secure that presence, God would rather give a nation as a ransom to preserve you. Verse 5. 
Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your offsprings from the east, where they are dispersed, and gather you from the west. The last verse. It says, for I will say to the north, give up. Do you know what this means? I will say to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. That everything that has been scattered north, south, east and west. That because you have secured the presence of God. He can begin to give instructions. It is not just men. Men don't come alone. Men come with things. When the Magi saw the star. That identified where Jesus the king was. They came with gifts. The Bible says they came with the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When Job was about to be restored, the Bible says all the people who left him, they started coming from everywhere. Job 42 and verse 10. Give it to us, please. Job 42 and verse 10. That the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had. How did that happen? 11. The Bible says, then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and they that had been his acquaintance before. Something made them leave him and did eat bread with him in his house. And they bemoaned him and comforted him over the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money. Every man. First Samuel chapter 18. Let's start our reading from verse 10. Still amplified. First Samuel 18 from verse 10. Are you ready? Watch what happened to the boy David. The Bible says the next day, an evil spirit from God. One day I will teach you that some of these expressions that mean an evil spirit from God. It was an error in the understanding of the prophets those days. Because evil does not proceed from God. But for now, let's just look at it. It says, and raved madly in his house. Saul now. And David played with his hands as at other times. And Saul was holding a javelin. Saul wanted to kill David. And the Bible says Saul cast the javelin. And he thought, I will pin David to the wall. And David evaded him twice. Read on. Saul was afraid of David. Verse 12. He says, because the Lord was with him. Saul was afraid. David became a threat. What is it about this young boy that exempts him? That evil that should happen to him. Even the one I planned does not happen. Look at what Saul ended up doing. The man who wanted to kill David. Watch what he ended up doing. Verse 13. So Saul removed David from him and made him commander over a thousand. And he went out and came in before the people. Verse 14. David acted wisely in all his ways and succeeded. And the Lord was with him. You see there again. 15. We're reading to 16. When Saul saw how capable and successful David was, he stood in awe of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David, for he went out and came in before them. Everybody say honor. Say exemption. That's what happens when the Lord is in the midst of you, even to be mighty. Honor trails you like a shadow. Is someone learning? Saul wanting to kill David. David does that javelin and he ended up promoting him when you read the previous verses you will see that women began to sing songs to say ah Saul killed 1,000 and David 10,000 and it grieved his heart can I tell you this you can respect yourself you've heard me say but you cannot honor yourself nobody has the power to honor himself honor is conferred upon you are we together? There are many believers who love God. There are many gifted and graced people. But they lack this grace for honor. 
Honor causes men to perceive you correctly, to match the worth of your sacrifice, and then to reward you accordingly. The assignment of honor is to keep correcting perceptions until it matches who you truly are. Hallelujah. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. That's the end of his story. Then it goes back to scene one and says that the mother bore him in sorrow and she named him Jabez because of her pain. And he got to a point where he found out his contemporaries had risen. Nothing was working in his life. He took responsibility. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me, he said, and enlarge my coast. And he prayed and the Bible says God had him. Four things that the presence of God secures. Never forget this. So that when you see people walking in this possibility, the secret is not any invention of themselves. They have found security in the manifested presence of God. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. Let me give you five keys very quickly. Five keys. Haven't told you the benefit and the blessings that come when you secure the manifest presence of God. Let me show you the road map. Please follow very carefully. I want you to pray in one minute and say, Lord, open my eyes. Let me see. I need this. I need this in my life. Are you praying? Open my eyes that I will see, beholding wondrous things out of your law. Hallelujah. I give you these five keys as irrefutable spiritual keys. That everyone who understands and activates these keys, you will, you will experience the manifest presence of God in your life alongside the blessings in a fearful way. Key number one. You want to secure the Shekinah of God in your life perpetually. The first key is passion for God. Passion for God. Matthew 22 and verse 37. Please let's hurry up. Matthew 22, 37. Passion for God. You cannot secure that dimension of God's presence without passion for God. 22 37 Matthew 22 37 Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all thy heart that means you can love him with part of it is that true with all thy soul and with all thy mind that means when he has to do with God your heart your mind your brain your soul Everything must plunge into it. Can I tell you, the presence of God is not a political issue. If you are not genuinely passionate, you can fake power, not presence. You can get unadulterated power, not adulterated presence. Passion for God. John chapter 14 and verse 23. John 14, 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come to him. Is that in your Bible? And make our abode with him. So your love and your passion for God will secure that dimension of his presence there are many believers who have not made up their minds to passionately love and seek jesus you can't secure that presence he will love you you are just ready to remain at the outer court you are not ready to press through even to the holy of holies first corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9 first corinthians 2 and verse 9 first key passion for god but as it is written, 
He says, I had not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Listen, there are many people who love preaching more than Jesus. There are people who love anointing more than Jesus. There are people who love the motions of spiritual leadership more than Jesus. There are people who love the accolades of men more than Jesus. Those who love business more than Jesus. Can I tell you, it's a risk in this end time to love anything and exalt it above and beyond Jesus. You want to secure divine presence. You want the Lord to be in the midst of you and even to be mighty. Let me tell you, it has to do with your love for Jesus. Not your love for preaching. Not your love for healing. Not your love for deliverance. We are back to where it all starts. Passion. I love Jesus to what degree? Passion qualifies the love. It, it, it makes it deeper. That is everything. Church is quiet. Apostle, can't he just come? Was I? No, sir. No. Listen to me. Only a foolish person will take a visitor that you suspect to be a thief and take him to where you keep your money and your ATM and your jewelries and say, just sit here and wait for me. I'm traveling somewhere and I'll return back. Is that how much you hate yourself? There are visitors that when they come, they stand at the gate. You don't hate them, but they have not chosen to press deeper. So you, what, is, what are you looking for? Okay, this and that and that, all right. You give to them at the gate. There are others who may enter into the house and stay outside. You will honor them by bringing a seat and say, please sit outside. There are others who may get into the living room and sit cheerfully as though they are writing an exam. All of them are relationship dependent. There's somebody who will enter the living room and even before you arrive, the person can just, he can even pick your remote and be flipping channels. It is all a product of relationship. And yet there are few, very few who can even come and meet you in your room and say, how are you? They can even be helping you dress your cloth while you are not there. It is relationship dependent. So don't you give God the relationship of a stranger and expect to be at the inner court of the spirit. It will not happen that way. Preacher, it will not happen that way. Businessman, it will not happen that way. There are people who will remain at the outer court. They are interested. Lord, I just hear you are something that blesses, whatever you are. I love you, and if you ever find a reason to bless me, I'm still here. Outer court. There are others who will push his hand and say, I'm looking for your heart. Do you know there are people who, they are not the owners of your house. They don't live in your house, but you are so close, you can give them the spare key. Have you seen people like that? To the point that you can call them and say, where are you? Okay, enter my house, go to my bedroom, open a drawer there, you will see some money or something, pick it up. Have you seen it? Yes, sir. You are talking, you have that confidence. That's why God can trust certain people with graces. And you are wondering, is God not afraid? Is it not a risk to make this person that powerful? Find out the relationships and the covenants that provide that possibility. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love your presence. Hallelujah. A gentleman sent me a text some months ago. I don't know who that is. Apparently, it's just, it's just something, I think he... Maybe because he used to watch me just say the power of God will do this, this one will happen. And he just thought the thing just happens. And then I think he went to his fellowship or his group or something like that. And um, according to him, he said he repeated everything that he knew I was saying. And 
he made a mess and a fool out of himself there because it is not a charm you are not reciting oh the power of god will touch somebody here this one no 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 this is not i am gabriel that stands in the presence do you know what that means gabriel is saying if i've come to destroy you zechariah are you saying the eye of god did not see it i am gabriel man of god preach standing in the presence businessman do business standing in the presence and watch what happens to your life extraordinary manifestations of the glory of god Many preachers will not pay the price to build that intimacy that creates that cloud of the presence. And we mechanically come before God's people. Then you want to prophesy. Then you want to preach. You will be surprised that you will be preaching a sermon that should be so powerful. And yet the people are looking at you like this. Clueless and wondering why you will end. Because it's just words. Empty words. Not backed by any presence. Hallelujah. Many years ago, I preached a message called Envoys of His Presence. And I was teaching believers this same thing. How to access divine presence. I have found it as a gift and a treasure. My greatest asset is not anointing. Believe me. My greatest asset is not the scriptures in my mind. As powerful as they are. My greatest asset is not my Bible. This was produced by a publishing house with people there who are not even born again. Are we together? My greatest asset is the presence of God. Cast me not away, not from my palace. Cast me not away from thy presence. He says, take not your spirit from me. He knew what he would miss. Moses said, do not let us live here if your presence will not go with us. Lord, can there be any koinonia service without your presence? What then will we be doing? Preaching? No. Passion for God. Number two. What is the second key that secures the manifest presence of God in the life of an individual? Are you ready? The desire to please God. The desire to please God. You can put slash total obedience. The desire to please God slash total obedience. John chapter 8 and verse 29. Let's hurry up so we can pray. John 8, 29. Jesus is speaking now. Please look up. He said, and he that sent me is with me. The Father had not left me alone. Why? For I do always those things that please him. That means the Father is not just walking with me because I am Jesus the Son. My passion to please him, my passion to obey him is what has secured his presence. John 14, 21. John chapter 14 and verse 21. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. He says, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Is that in your Bible? Ezekiel chapter 33, please, and verse 31. Ezekiel 33, 31. It says, And they come to thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. Everybody said the desire to please him. That's right. That my life will bring joy to you, O oh God. 
and he says this for me you are ready for this dimension of my presence number three are you ready for the third key what is the third key that activates the manifest presence of god in the life of a man intense moments of prayer and worship please start that point intense moments of prayer and worship yes sir intense moments of prayer and worship psalm 10 verse 4 psalm 10 verse 4 and then 63 from verse 1 psalm 10 verse 4 it says the wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after god he says god is not in all his thoughts look at such a man because of his pride i am self-sufficient he will not seek after god god is not even in his thoughts psalm 63 and verse 1 oh god thou art my god early will i seek thee my soul thirsted for thee my flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is verse 2 to see thy power and thy glory so as i have seen in the sanctuary next verse it says because thy loving kindness is better than life my lips will praise you verse 4 thus i will bless thee while i live I will lift up my hands in thy name. Uh -huh. It says, my soul shall be satisfied as a result with marrow and fatness. And my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. Can I tell you this? Many of you heard the testimony when I came in. I met the testimony of that dear lady, the convert. That she played worship and prayed. Listen, let me tell you, if you want God to come down, do what Paul and Silas did. The Bible says they at midnight, they took their eyes away from the chains and everything. They prayed and then they sang and the prisoners had them. I'm sure somebody from a neighboring cell will say, stupid people, we're all criminals. Would you keep quiet here? Let's meditate on what is going to happen to us. And the Bible says they kept praying and singing. It was not an angel that came. Read your Bible. For... Apostle Peter, it was an angel that came because they were praying alone. But these ones prayed and then they sang. And God said, you guys step back. The Bible says suddenly an earthquake. That's God for you. Angels don't create earthquake. Broke everything and the chains were there. And the jailer wanted to kill himself and he said, no, 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 no. We are safe. What happened? He came. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee. Can I tell you? Learn this. There are times that you need to take out time to pray. Pray. And when you pray, you worship, you sing songs, you roll. If you can't sing, the worship team, they've sung for you. There are so many songs. People have done all kinds of worship collections saturate your room there is no man of god i know who is a solid career of god's presence who has alienated the life of worship it has nothing to do with whether you can sing or not it is the protocol of his presence psalm 100 said come before him with singing hallelujah sometimes you can just lie down and allow that worship Consuming fire, sweet perfume, His awesome presence fills this room. Consuming fire, sweet perfume, Your awesome presence fills my life. Consuming fire, sweet perfume, your awesome presence. Let me give you a secret. 
the moment you find out that your atmosphere is tense, you are sensing demonic activities or anger or some attributes, change immediately. Look for worship and change that climate. Hear what I'm telling you. The moment you begin to sense unease in your spirit, the spirit of fear, other spirits are joining the queue, waiting for fear or anger or any of these spirits. You can change the atmosphere immediately. Hallelujah. Is this how my life will be? What is the meaning of this? Why was I born in Nigeria? My parents had the opportunity to go abroad. Once those thoughts start coming, just know that it is the devil. That's a Luciferian spirit wanting to destroy you. Will this man really favor me? He said tomorrow he will bless me. But how am I sure? Very quickly change that atmosphere. It's a secret. Your phone is not just for you to browse. Remove a lot of rubbish songs and put correct, godly, fire-carrying songs. Arrange them as a file so that when duty calls without thinking twice. Hallelujah. The devil looks at you and says, the way I destroyed your father and your mother, that is how I will shred your life to pieces. You see what is happening in this nation. And just when he wants to speak, you just play something. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Let the voice just keep talking. Let's see who will survive. Don't stop the voice from talking. You just create that atmosphere. Listen. Don't waste your time shutting the voice. You bring in another voice. My Bible says the light shineth in darkness. Listen. You go to bed and you wake up with some kind of dream. Just play worship and go to bed. Let it, put it on repeat. If God helps you and you can find one that has tongues in between. Shabakatoskatia. While you are sleeping. Hallelujah. Listen. Please don't think I'm wasting your time. Master the art of controlling your atmosphere. Don't give Satan that room. The world is negative. Hear me. The world is negative in many regards. You switch on the news. You hear that this is happening. They just deduct some money from your, your account to add to it. And you see what is left. You feel like throwing away your phone. That's the time to change your atmosphere. Don't, please don't forget this. It's called the law of atmosphere. Every spirit is atmosphere dependent. They are manifestations. When the devil wants to come, he does not just barge into you. There is an atmosphere that he has to wait for. Hallelujah. Passionate love, desire to please God and to obey Him, intense moments of prayer and worship. Please look at me. It is good to pray, but in addition to prayer, take out time to worship God. Apostle, what does it mean to worship God? One, to sing. You can sing praises and worship God or you can be in that atmosphere where you are pouring your life and your everything to Him in worship. Are you ready? Number four. What is the fourth key that secures the manifest presence of God? Walking in humility. Write it down, please. Walking in humility. Psalm 34 verse 18. The fourth key. You want to secure the manifest presence of God. The Bible says the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. And saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Pride and glory will not go hand in hand. That means... 
You want to secure weightier dimensions of God's presence? Father, I stand in awe of you that you can do this through my hands and my life. Thank you for your presence and the wonderful things that happen. And God will say, just because I gave you this dimension, you are walking in humility. People will sing your praises and clap. Thank God for them. But you remind yourself, I am nothing without him. And he says, you are ready for another dimension. Weightier dimensions of his presence. Hallelujah. Koinonia, please hear me. I have a duty to admonish you. Fight pride. Fight pride out of your life. Don't say we are like that. Fight it. Every time you see pride in your life, don't tolerate it whatsoever. Pride in ministry, pride in business, the pride of life, pride based on accomplishments. It does not mean to not acknowledge what God is doing. You have to acknowledge Him. It does not mean to not receive gratefully when people thank God for your life. But please fight pride. You know what pride is? Pride is a state of self-sufficiency where you believe that every result you are getting is because of your own effort. Now you are in trouble. Humility is not throwing away the truth or the fact about who you are and what God has done in your life, but a, an unashamed and a vocal acknowledgement that I am what I am today because of Him. God, you've made me a billionaire, you may say. Thank you for that. If you say I'm not a billionaire, that's not humility. That's ignorance. You are a billionaire. God has blessed you. God has helped you. Apostle, should I trek instead of entering my car? That is, that is the labor of a fool. The Bible says to worry every one of them. Are we together? But humility is that in the midst of that, you take your eyes away from these things and say, Father, it is because of you. I am what I am by the grace of God. Humility. Finally, what is the final key that secures the presence of God? Sacrifice. As a lifestyle, oh, not just as something you do traditionally, sacrifice of everything, your life, your resources, everything. Sacrifice secures the presence of God. Psalm 50 and verse 5. Gather unto me my saints, it says, 50 and verse 5. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Hallelujah. Very, very powerful. When you read 1 Kings chapter 3, 1 Kings chapter 3, the full text is 3 to 14. We may not be able to read everything, but let's see how far we can go. Solomon loved the Lord, the Bible says. Are you seeing all these steps there? Then walking in the statutes of David his father, only he sacrificed and burned incense in high places. Verse 4. It says, The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. And he offered a thousand bond offerings, motivated by love. Verse 5. In Gibeon, who came? The Lord. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask what I will give you. That's a blank check. Most of us, even God will be surprised. You will think he's not hearing you again. Just listening to everything you are saying. What did you say I should give you? I should give you heaven and move away from there. I should give you my throne. Because many people sometimes, we, we don't have limits to our passions and desires. When you have desires without limits, it will lead you to carnality. You must get to a realm where you know that enough is enough. Some of us, if God asks now, what should I give you? Anything. He says, stand up from your throne. That was the mistake of Haman. What shall we do to this man? He said, let him climb the king's horse. And wear the king's robe. Out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth was. That means one day he would have killed the king. Esther helped him to kill him fast. If not, one day, Haman would have killed the king. He said, I have served you in righteousness, in uprightness. You have kept me 
you have kept for him in this great kindness thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day verse 7 he says now O lord thou hast made thy servant king instead of david my father and i am but a little child this is a king go not a king about to be elected or about to be a king that is currently seated and he said lord they call me king but i know what i am before you i am a little child i know not how to go out and how to come in what display of humility he says and thy servant is in the midst of thy people which thou hast chosen a great people that cannot be numbered or counted for multitude verse 9 give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge your people that i may be discern between good and bad for who is able to judge these people this so great a people the bible said the speech pleased the lord are you seeing all the steps i'm leading now he did something here that pleased the lord that solomon had asked this thing even in his requests and petitions he was pleasing the lord and the lord said because thou hast not asked for long life neither for riches for thyself nor the life of your enemies but you have asked for yourself understanding to decide judgment behold i have done according to all thy words i have given thee a wise and understanding heart so that there was none like thee before thee neither after thee shall there arise any like unto thee and i have also given thee that which thou hast not asked both riches and honor so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days humility is a very powerful spiritual quality that can secure the presence of god do you know i submit to you sincerely every time i have the opportunity to pray and spend time with god especially preparing for koinonia i sit down sometimes and i don't say anything i may just allow worship to just be playing and i think of the honor that god has given me god has given me the honor of many people's lifetime in one and sometimes i'm not even able to pray and i say god look at what you have done through my life if you never bless me again you don't owe me you have you have blessed me you have been kind to me do you know what it means for god to gather people across the world to listen to you and to pay attention to what you represent don't you ever take it for granted it is the mercy and the favor of god sometimes i just lie down flat on the ground and i say lord i dedicate this result this success while i'm doing that tens and hundreds of text messages are coming to my phone from all over the world apostle you are this and i push the phone together with the text messages you can wait let me worship the god who made me what i am learn humility don't be ashamed of it we live in a world where submitting your trophies to jesus looks like you fall in your hand we are very full of ourselves. We like to brag and say, this is my own, my estate, my building, my car, my money. Wonderful. But Jesus must be seen. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Higher. Be lifted higher. In my life, be lifted higher. Higher, be lifted higher. Let my King be lifted up. Let your name be lifted up. Let your praise be lifted up. you are demonstrating humility in his presence and before men you must demonstrate humility in his presence and then before men if you demonstrate humility in his presence alone you are still a hypocrite 
in his presence and before men. They must see your life and know that this man was God made. Made by God. The same way you look at a product and they say made in China or made in the US. Made by this. Built by this construction company. People should look at your life. Prospered by God. Helped by God. Anointed by God. Favored. Hold on. They should not just see the prosperity. By who? The person who made it happen is the one who, de who deserves the credit. Let's wrap up. Finally, when you make up your mind to live a life of sacrifice, you have offered your entire body a living sacrifice, it says. Romans 12 and verse 1. I beseech you, brethren, by the message of God, he says, to offer your body. So your body is the first sacrifice. Because the love of God will constrain you on many grounds. Sacrifice. The presence of God would not come for nothing. It comes because there is work to be done. Your body, your resources, your intellect, everything must serve the Lord. So... If your body is serving the Lord and your pocket is not serving the Lord, it is not complete sacrifice. If your pocket is serving the Lord and your body is not serving the Lord, it is not complete sacrifice. Your mind must serve the Lord. Your influence must serve the Lord. Everything God gave you must serve the Lord. Sacrificially so. Hallelujah. We return from a trip today and as soon as we arrive, I didn't even consider, it was not in my mind whether I'm tired or not. That, that, that was far from it. My heart was just to brush up on my notes and to pray excitedly. Lord, this is another opportunity again to bless your people. Thank you for the honor of granting me safe journey. Now, let's get to the business. When we are done and I'm done with everything, I can now find out. Are you tired? They said you came and preached. Now I can verify whether it was me or it was. Can I tell you this? There are many of us, God cannot trust you with certain weights of his presence because of simple laziness and an and excessive passion for comfort and convenience. This duty will cost you everything. There are times you will have to stretch. Jesus stretched. The apostles stretched. I hand over to you five keys that I have worked with in my own life and I've seen a bit of this grace and this mighty presence of God upon my life. For as long as you walk in keeping with these keys, a final recap as we pray. Number one, passion for God. Number two, the desire to please God and to walk in total obedience. Number three, intense moments of heartfelt prayer and worship. Number four, walking in humility, genuine humility. And number five, a lifestyle of sacrifice. Excitedly so, you have secured the keys that will make you indeed a host to God's Shekinah. Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim, fill this place. We'll sing it one more time and then we're done. Ruach Elohim, Ruach Elohim, Ruach Elohim, Ruach Elohim. Two prayer 
prayer points tonight one minute each prayer point number one father i obtain grace to walk in keeping with the principles and the keys that secure your manifest presence in my life please open your mouth and begin to pray talk to the lord from the depth of your heart i desire to be a genuine carrier of your presence Genuine career of your presence. Genuine career of your presence. The Lord my God in the midst of me is mighty. Are you praying? I obtain grace. Sagretos kalibarando zekete balakusiata. Prayer point number two. I'd like you to begin to pray. Father, you are mighty in my life. Let me see your might produce favor. Let me see your might bring me rest round about. Let me see your might bring me supernatural protection and preservation. Let me see your might bring me honor and exemption. Someone pray. Lord, you are in my midst, in my business, in my church. The Lord in the midst of thee is mighty. I enjoy divine favor, supernatural favor with God and with man by reason of your presence. I enjoy rest round about by reason of your presence. I enjoy supernatural protection and preservation physically and spiritually. I enjoy honor and exemption. Honor and exemption. Honor and exemption. For in Jesus' name I pray. For in Jesus' name I pray. I decree and declare, by reason of this teaching tonight, and by the power that raised Christ from the dead, may the presence of God, like you have never experienced in your faith walk, may it mantle you from tonight. In the name of Jesus. That you will become a living manifestation of the Shekinah of the Almighty. That presence will go with you to your homes. It will go with you to your office. It will go with you to your school. It will go with you to your business. It will go with you to your church. It will go with you to your place of assignment. It will be with you while you travel. That presence will be with you as you return. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. When the rod of Aaron was kept before the ark, even though it had no roots to the earth, it budded. By all means, be fruitful. By all means, be fruitful. Whether it is favorable or not, by mystery of the presence of God. In the name of Jesus, be fruitful. Multiply. Be fruitful. Multiply. Between this week and Sunday, I decree and declare, may my God surprise you. May my God surprise you. Surprise you with favor. Surprise you with honor. Exempt you from evil. In Jesus name. So you walk out of this place tonight. Conscious. Of the fact that I am not alone. The same way you never walk conscious of your nakedness. Because perpetually there is a cloth. Now think so spiritually. 
and even physically. That what I am wearing is not just the cloth that is covering my nakedness. There is another layer of glory upon me. As you shake people, shake from that glory. As you talk, talk from that glory. As you minister, minister from that glory. As you do business, do business from that glory. I forbid death over your life. I forbid infirmity over your life. I, I forbid shame and reproach over your life. In Jesus' name I pray.